maybe you work out four or five days a week during weeks one and two. Maybe you work out two or three days a week during weeks three and four, especially if you're doing, if you're like, yeah, I have to do this length of a run at this time. Great. Maybe make sure you have a full rest day in between. You do another workout. Hey there, welcome to the Female Health Solution Podcast, where we discuss women's health, hormones, and everything else in between. Join me as we dive into the tools that you need to live your healthiest life. Hey there, everyone. Welcome back to the Female Health Solution Podcast. I'm your host, Dr. Beth Westy. Today, we're going to talk about exercise and the female cycle. Now, there's a lot of different ways to do this, and I'm going to talk about some basic ways to look at your activity and your hormonal cycle. I'm also going to talk about perimenopause and menopause because that's a little different. Um, I do address more of this in my book, The Female Fat Solution, where I have a whole section of that book where it's called The Seven Bodies of Eve. And it's really looking at the different bodies that women go through in their lifetime. There's a very big difference of you and what your body is in your, you know, early twenties, right? And then Maybe you have kids, you go through pregnancy and postpartum, and then you get into your mid thirties and your body is different then. And then you get to your mid forties and then your mid fifties and your body's very different then. So with these different bodies we live in, keep in mind that there's still that hormonal cycle that happens in between then. So much fun to keep track of. Yay. (laughs) So with that in mind, I'll start with the cycle and just look at about a 28 day cycle Days one through 14 is um, the estrogen phase where estrogen is more dominant overall, except for the first, you know, a few days of your period. And then after ovulation, progesterone should rise and should be elevated, you know, for the remainder of the cycle. Now, if you don't have good hormonal balance, that will not be happening. And some of this might not apply to you, meaning it won't feel like it fits for you. And that's okay. These are just things to take into account when you're really looking at what your body is doing and to get the most out of biohacking your hormones and your life. So first day of your period um, and the first several days, your estrogen and progesterone levels are actually the lowest they are throughout the whole month. The main dominant hormone is testosterone. So if you have a, a good cycle, meaning you don't, it's not super heavy, you don't have a lot of cramps, you feel okay. This is a time where you can do a lot of exercise um, and and be fine with it. If you really have a hard time, that's okay and you can rest. There's no rule that says you can't. And in fact, your period is detoxifying. There's a lot of things happening internally with your system. So if you're feeling worn out, that's totally normal. Then um, with testosterone though, that hormone is helpful for building and maintaining lean muscle in our system. Wonderful. It's also interesting, this is sort of a sidebar, it's also really interesting when we think about women having their periods, and this is something that half of the population has had, right, for the the history of humans on the planet, right? This is how this works. Oh my gosh. And there are so many cultures that historically, when women are on their periods, they do not do anything. They don't do daily chores. Their husbands, like there was something, was this on TikTok or something? I was listening to this thing where they were talking about ancient civilizations from like 2000 years ago or whatever. And there was a a record that they were going through like work records of why somebody didn't show up for work. And the reason was translated was that his wife essentially had her period. So he had to stay home to take care of the kids and do the chores. And I was like, I'm sorry, what? (laughs) I literally had never heard of that until I went to college. I played volleyball with a gal my freshman year. She was so fun. Uh, She was from Croatia. Like one of the most fun people ever. And that was the thing. She was like, I don't understand why we have to do this or whatever when you have your period. And I was like, I don't know. We just do. Like, I was like, do you not? She goes, no, we lay on the couch. And my father and or brothers will bring me like a tray with snacks and then a shot of something. I don't, I can't remember if it was vodka or something. And she's like, that's what we do. We lay there and like basically chill and have the men in the household bring you shots of alcohol and snacks. And I was like, I was blown away for so many different reasons. (laughs) Like... 
I mean, I was 18. I'd never, like, what? She was like, yeah, this is normal. This is how it is. Oh, okay, I could get on board with this. <laughs> right? That's one of the things where sometimes if you are going through and, and having your period and you just don't feel good, it's okay. It's okay to not push yourself, to not force yourself. Or just to do like, you know, I'm just going to go for a walk. I'm just going to do some gentle stretching or something. Great. Wonderful. That's just fine. But um, right around day four or five, estrogen really does start to rise. And we do want to take advantage of that. So the rest of that estrogen phase, right? Optimally day, you know, four through 14, those 10 days, if you want to build lean muscle, if you want to get after it, if you want to improve performance, improve recovery time, train your muscles that way, speed, agility, all of that, kick it into gear, kick it into gear. You can do more intense training, intense interval training, all that stuff. Wonderful. Heavier weights, all those things. When I go up in weight, and this is, you know, part of this is me sharing kind of what I'm doing right now. I am really working on building my lean muscle. I am, I'm going to call it a bulk phase. I'm trying to bulk. <laughs> I want to get, I have lost, um, I did lose a lean muscle that I had built and maintained for most of my life, um, going through, uh, mold, really struggling with, uh, mold and then having that brown recluse spider bite. <sighs> that was so awful for me. And I, one of the biggest lasting health impacts is that I've had a heck of a time building my lean muscle back. So that's my big focus. I am really trying to bulk. So th this time frame. I increase my weights with everything. And then my goal for the rest of the month is just to stay there. I use that time frame. Okay, how can I push it a little more? If I'm doing a set of something, can I use a, a 12 pound weight instead of a 10 pound weight? If I'm doing just flies, arm, you know, just arm flies, right? Build up the, that shoulder muscle and strength. Can I use a 12 pound weight for even one set, one and a half sets instead of using a 10 pound weight? Great. That's when I'll do it. And then I try to maintain whatever I did, the rest of it. That estrogen does help build lean muscle. And I'm trying to take advantage of the estrogen that I have while I still have it. <laughs> um, I'm really, really trying. So your system just can have better recovery then too. So if you want to push yourself with more frequent workouts, wonderful. You absolutely can. After ovulation, and especially right around that high hormone phase, this is days 20, 21, 22, 23, that a progesterone should be right near its peak, as well as having a more of a bump with estrogen. And you're thinking that should help. Ah, this is when you can have a harder time physically. That high hormone phase, meaning you can have a harder time physically. So during the progesterone phase, I still, because my goal is to try and still build lean muscle, I'm still trying to do that. But I'm also going to take it a little easier. Give myself a little extra time in between sets. I'm going to watch my heart rate more because increased blood volume at this time means that your heart rate can get higher quicker and have a harder time coming down as quickly. So watching your heart rate is a really great tool during this phase after ovulation, days 15 through 28. Now this progesterone phase I mean, a lot of gals will feel like, okay, I feel okay, or I can do activity, but man, I just don't feel as like that spark as bright, as quick of a turnaround. Yeah. Yeah. You might need more sleep at night during this phase, especially if you're still pushing yourself. So this is where I will still incorporate the strength, not try and increase my weights though, but do more endurance and really work on mobilization really work on stretching, flexibility. That's also very helpful because at this point too, our system is kind of slowed down. Our digestive system is slowed down. So part of what's really helpful for our hormones is to have our pathways open and have everything flow and move through. And if you're really just forcing yourself and pushing yourself all the time, your pathways might not be staying open real well on their own. But if you can do incorporate more walking, more longevity, right? Work on endurance a little bit more during this time that can also help with that pathway, with that lymph flow overall. Now, again, if you're somebody who's like, well, I, I'm training for a half marathon. I'm training for a marathon. I don't have the luxury. 
of shifting and changing this of what I'm doing with my workout. You can do the same workout if you go to a class, right? If you're like, I take a class, I take a box, boxing class or kickboxing or something, right? Boot camp class, awesome. The class you may take may be the same, but any variable that you can change is what's really helpful. Rest time, recovery time, time between sets. And again, your heart rate will tell you how fast you're recovering. So if you're thinking, gosh, I have to put this in the uh, miles in this week for running or whatever. Okay. Yep. That's fine. Make sure you're doing enough recovery or make sure you're not running again right away the next day. For example, maybe you work out four or five days a week during weeks one and two. Maybe you work out two or three days a week during weeks three and four. Are you being consistent overall? Yes. But are you accommodating a little more rest, especially if you're doing, if you're like, yeah, I have to do this length of a run at this time. Great. Maybe make sure you have a full rest day in between. You do another workout. Most of the time, I I don't give specific things and say, do this exactly this and this and this, because every body is different. And what you might be working towards is different and where you're at in your health journey is different, right? And and what you're (laughs) conditioned to is different. When I stopped, you know, playing volleyball in college, I had a really hard time going to the gym for just an hour. I was like, if I can't spend three hours there, what's the, what's the point? That's how much I used to work out. You can still (laughs) be active and everything and not spend hours and hours and hours in the gym. There's a lot you can do in your daily life to be uh, mobile and keep movement going. And again, one of the best things you can do for your health is walk. Walk 20 minutes a day, 30 minutes a day, even every other day. So much benefit happens from that getting outside, fresh air, all the things. So that's what I got you for you guys for exercise for your cycle. Please let me know if you have any other questions. We do give more specific recommendations in the female hormone solution program. So if you're like, well, yes, I kind of get it or yep, I know this or but what about this or this or if I'm doing this or if I have this going on, how would I navigate X, Y, or Z? That's where we're able to, once we know more about you, your hormone levels, your adrenal levels, all that stuff, it's so much easier to say, okay, this is more of a parameter you could have for your running and weightlifting schedule, or this is what you should be leaning more towards. Let's do more walking and yoga this many days a week. Once we know what's happening for you. So, all right. Thanks for tuning in. I appreciate it as always. I hope you have a great rest of your day and I will chat with you guys later. Thank you for joining me on today's episode. If you would like more information, just head on over to drbethwesty.com for all the show notes and information from today's episode. And if you're looking for more community, more support, you can find and follow me on Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, TikTok, and I would love to see you there.